Lack of qualified health personnel is a major challenge across the world, particularly in low and middle income countries. This video is meant for health policy makers in these settings. Here we present what we know from research about the effects of using lay health workers for maternal and child health and tuberculosis. We'll show that lay health workers can make an important impact in some areas and will describe how this was achieved. Lay health workers go under many names, including community health workers, village health workers, treatment supporters, and birth attendants. They have no formal professional education, but they have usually received a short amount of training. They sometimes take on tasks normally carried out by health professionals, but are often used to provide additional services such as outreach visits and health promotion. Lay health worker programs primarily aim to improve people's health, but they may also aim to empower a community by providing people with an opportunity to improve their own circumstances. So what can the evidence tell us about the effect of lay health worker programs? To see if we could answer this question, a group of researchers from the Cochrane Collaboration carried out a systematic review. We searched for the best available research evidence about the effects of programs for mother and child health and for tuberculosis. We found 82 relevant trials that were of good enough quality to be included. All of the trials looked at child health or at tuberculosis. These trials focused on health improvements rather than community empowerment. None of the trials looked at maternal health. These trials came from both high, middle and low income countries and were quite varied, for instance, with regard to the size of the programs and the ways that the lay health workers were recruited and trained. In most of the trials, the lay health workers came from the same community as the people they were targeting or shared the same social and educational background. Here, we'll focus on what these trials can tell us about the impact of lay health worker programs on four areas, childhood immunization, breastfeeding, child deaths and illnesses, and tuberculosis. The trials that focused on immunization were from the USA and Ireland among economically disadvantaged families. The lay health workers visited families with children under the age of two in their homes and gave them information about the importance of vaccinating their children and encouraged them to visit clinics to get this done. These families were compared to families who received no such visits. The trials conclude that Home visits by lay health worker programs probably increase the number of children who complete their immunization schedules. In these studies, we saw that among the 1,000 children who were not visited by lay health workers, 495 of them were vaccinated anyway according to schedule. But in the group where lay health workers were paying visits, 604 children were vaccinated. That's an increase of over 100 children. These numbers are our best estimate of what happened based on results from the different studies. But as in all research, there's some amount of uncertainty. The estimate may be too low or too high. In the brackets, we show what is called the confidence interval, a range of two numbers within which we're fairly certain the result does lie sort of like a best case, worst case scenario. For immunization, the worst case scenario is 544 children per 1,000, which is still more vaccinated children than for the group with no lay health worker visits. We also evaluated the quality of evidence on a scale of very low, low, moderate or high. We base this on a number of factors such as how well the research was carried out, or how much the results varied from study to study. 
the immunization evidence was rated moderate quality. The trials that focused on breastfeeding took place in nine high, middle, and low income countries. In most of the trials, lay health workers visited mothers in their homes and gave them counseling, education, and support about breastfeeding. These mothers were compared to mothers who were not visited by lay health workers. These trials conclude that lay health workers probably have a considerable impact on the number of mothers who start to breastfeed their children. They probably also have a major impact on the number of mothers who breastfeed their children exclusively and who do so for the whole first six months. We also evaluated the quality of this evidence to be moderate. The trials focusing on child deaths and illness were carried out in nine low- and middle-income countries. In about half of these trials, lay health workers visited mothers in their homes. They taught mothers about childhood illness and health issues, referring sick children on to health facilities when necessary. Some also managed or treated common childhood illnesses, such as acute respiratory infections, malaria, diarrhea and malnutrition. In the other half of the trials, lay health workers promoted birth preparedness and essential newborn care. Families in all trials were compared to families who were not visited by lay health workers. These trials conclude that lay health workers may reduce the number of children who die or who suffer from common childhood illnesses such as fever, acute respiratory infections, or diarrhea. They may also increase the number of parents who seek professional help when their child becomes ill. As you can see from the table, our estimate suggests that the lay health workers had a positive effect. However, the confidence interval, that is, the range of possible results, makes us somewhat uncertain. For instance, the best case scenario suggests that visits from lay health workers may have led to even fewer newborn deaths, while the worst case scenario suggests that these visits may have made no difference at all. In addition to these uncertain results, we also assess the quality of this research evidence to be low. These two factors combined mean that these results should be interpreted with caution. The trials that focused on tuberculosis took place in a mix of high, middle, and low-income countries. In all these trials, lay health workers provided some sort of adherence support to people who are using medication either to cure tuberculosis or prevent it from developing. These patients were compared to patients who supervised themselves or who were supervised at health institutions. The results conclude that lay health workers probably have a small impact on the number of people who are cured from tuberculosis. However, they probably have little or no effect on the number of people who complete preventive treatment. We evaluated the quality of this evidence to be moderate. Summing up, you can say that lay health workers probably have an important positive effect on immunization rates and breastfeeding. For tuberculosis, they probably have an effect on the number of people who are cured, but not the number of people who complete preventive treatment. We still need more rigorous evaluation of lay health worker programs, particularly where there is little evidence or where the quality of existing evidence is low. How applicable are these findings to your particular setting? If you're considering setting up a lay health worker program, you may want to consider a number of issues specific for your own setting. Does your current health system have the financial and organizational resources necessary? For instance, do the health professionals in your setting have the capacity to collaborate with the lay health workers? And are the supplies that the lay health workers need in order to deliver these services easily available? 
Is there routine data available in your setting for planning the program? For instance, do you have immunization records so that you know which children have or have not been vaccinated? And will a lay health worker program be acceptable to professionals and the public in your setting? These questions and others are among a number of issues that may need to be explored. You also should consider building robust evaluation mechanisms into your program so that others can learn from your experiences. For more information about this topic, we have developed a short summary that can be found at the support website. The full review can be found at the website of the Cochrane Library. This summary has been prepared by support, a collaboration between the Alliance for Health Policy and Systems Research and the Cochrane Effective Practice and Organization of Care Group.